Industries India's Q1 FY24 earnings conference call. Today we are joined by senior members of the management team, including Mr. Suvamani Saha, managing director, and Mr. Vivek Agarwal, chief financial officer. Before we begin the call, let me first share our standard disclaimer. Some of the statements that may be made on today's conference call could be forward-looking in nature, and the actual results could vary from these forward-looking statements. A detailed statement in this regard is available in the press release, which has been circulated to you earlier, and also available on stock exchange websites. I would now like to invite Mr. Saha to share his perspectives with you. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Nishit. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us on this earnings call on our quarter one results. Today, we intend to cover updates and developments around the company and its business operations. We are making steady progress towards our goal of achieving growth across our business segments. And as the financial quarters add up, you will notice a reflection of this. I have pleasure in advising that we had a successful quarter with both revenue and profitability showing healthy growth. I will come to the details of this later in my remarks, but prior to that, let me highlight some of our initiatives and processes. The major area of importance for us in our growth initiative has been the engagement with our consumers. We have revitalized communication through and through. A series of new campaigns have been launched in print and electronic formats, highlighting the brand promise and explaining, of course, the virtues of our offering. For the first time, we have done so in each of our three business verticals simultaneously. As custodians to an iconic brand, we are engaged to ensure that we remain first and foremost in the minds of our target audience. Moving on to distribution, as advised in our earlier interactions, we have implemented the revamp of our route to market initiative with a view to run a highly streamlined and efficient organization that is, tuned, that is in tune with the requirements of the day. In the process of this restructuring, we took care not to impact our distribution reach, and the third-party tracking data validates that. However, the work is still not complete, as stabilization post such a large transformation takes time, and we will need the current quarter for the full system to settle down and revenue throughput to increase beyond growth levels seen in quarter one. We have also thoroughly assessed all aspects of our distribution channels, including traditional retail, modern retail, and e-commerce. To ensure seamless operations throughout the supply chain, we have integrated technology solutions and utilized data analytics. Significant progress has been made in this direction, and we continue to work on refining the process. To this context, we are happy with the progress so far, and believe that this will lead to an accelerated business growth. Everady continues to reign over the consumer battery market with a market share of 54% as per the latest monitored data. This remarkable success can be attributed to the combination of our iconic brand and an exceptional distribution network. As part of our growth agenda, we are leveraging the brand halo and the distribution strength across our other business segments as well. Innovation plays a critical role in all our business segments. Across the three verticals of batteries, flashlights, and lighting, we are introducing products which are novel and closely aligned with consumer requirements. Moving along in the battery segment, Everedy is at the pinnacle in terms of awareness and brand recall. It spans the market with a strong share of 54% as mentioned before, with a leadership position across the various segments. This indicates a strong and enduring connection between consumers and the brand. Our teams have been making concerted efforts to deliver growth at a level higher than the market with an agenda to deepen our penetration across the few under-indexed areas or segments in our operations. In flashlights, Everity is making quick inroads into the rechargeable category after having held a dominant position in battery-operated products, we are tapping into this high-potential category. The company's brand and distribution prowess 
have significantly contributed to the success of the flashlight category. Leveraging our design expertise and stringent QC, we have introduced products that stand out prominently from what is currently available in the market. The goal here is to drive high volumes and market share addressing all segments of rechargeable flashlights. Our portfolio of flashlights now comprise of some 51 models straddling price points from 80 rupees to 4000 rupees. Finally, I turn my attention to our third segment, which is LED lighting. In a short span of time, our business has made a quick impression in this market. We have the unique benefit of an ex extensive rural and semi-urban reach, and we are leveraging that for our LED bulbs and luminaires. Our teams have also been hard at work to create salience for our products in the electrical channel in larger population towns. In order to cater to consumers across all range of requirements, we have created a versatile portfolio with innovative and well-crafted products. In particular, our offering of the range of emergency bulbs have been particularly well-liked by the market. While the market, lighting market has enjoyed a historical trend of reasonable growth, this quarter saw a sharp value degrowth for the market and the lead players. We, however, recorded a significant revenue growth of 20% in the category. Now I would like to draw your attention to our overall performance during the recently concluded quarter. We reported a revenue growth of 8.4% with each of our three business segments reporting growth. This was driven by a combination of higher price realization as well as volume growth. EBITDA stood at 43.8 crores at a margin of 12% against 42.1 crores in the previous year. Raw material costs and foreign exchange volatility have reduced to an extent, thereby improving the margin profile. However, the reported margin captures a significantly higher impact of advertising and promotional spins as per our plans. That increased by 13.8% to 24.9 crores in line with operating growth. The bulk of our crucial work for our transformative journey has been successfully completed. With the gradual stabilization of the post-RTM distribution infrastructure over this quarter, we are confident of reverting to the double-digit growth that we have guided earlier. As already evidenced in quarter one, we expect such growth to be profitable and we remain on course to deliver EBITDA at double-digit margin. With that, I would like to bring my opening remarks to a close and request the moderator to allow participants to address their questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use answers while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Gautam Jain from GCJ Financial Advisors, LLP. Please go ahead. Yeah, many congratulations for a very good set of numbers, sir. Thank you. Uh, my first question is, uh, can you give us a breakup of uh, your three different products uh, in terms of revenue? Would you like to complete your questions or would you like to answer at this point? Yeah. yeah, my second question is, uh, can I have the growth rate and case number as of 30th June 2023? And third question would be, uh, what is your advertisement expenses for the quarter? 
Uh, we'll let our CFO answer this. So, so, if you see, as we have mentioned, we have a three categories of business. Our battery has grown by 5.6 percent, flashlight grown by 5 percent, and lighting has grown by 20 percent. So, it is an overall 8.3 percent growth for the quarter. And with respect to advertisement, if you see, it is around 28 CR advertisement expenses, including ATL and BTL, we have incurred during this quarter, which is uh, around 7.5 percent of the total. Revenue of the company. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Mr. Jain. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Dhruv from Ambit. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Am I audible? Uh, Mr. Dhruv, may we request you to use your handset, please? Hello. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Please yeah. go ahead. Yeah. No, I had a couple of questions. So one is that you know, uh, over the last two or three quarters, you've been talking about uh, improving your, uh, you mean improving the share of uh, you know alkaline batteries. So uh, just wanted to understand, you know, how that market share on the alkaline side has moved for you over the last uh, say two or three quarters. Uh, if you could just uh, provide some sort of qualitative data or quantitative data there. Uh, you said two questions. You want uh, you want to finish yes. the question? Sure. Okay. So uh, the other question of your was that uh, you know you, you we have seen a gross margin improvement uh, for you. So uh, but historically the gross margin numbers have been you know at a materially higher range. So uh, when do you see this really improving? And what are the two or three things which will have to happen you know before we revert to that higher number? And the third question is, I mean, third data point, if you can just share with us, is the segment level profitability. Uh, thanks. Okay, Drew, thanks a lot. Uh, you know, as we have been mentioning, uh, you know, alkaline remains the key focus area for the company. And uh, it is nothing to do from a consumer perspective. Basically, we are under-indexed in the premium side of the market. We are in the mass market, and uh, that premium segment constitutes a very small percent of that market, yet we remain under-indexed, which is why it remains a focus area. So, you know, over the last three quarters, uh, the data that you mentioned, while our effort and, you know, our seeding is continuing, there has not been a great change in the market share position yet, but the results should follow, you know, because we are currently in that uh, seeding phase when, you know, a lot of efforts are going in without, you know, results being immediately visible, which will happen in a quarter, a couple of quarters down the road. But as I said, it's a very small percentage of the overall battery market, which is why we are holding steady with our 54% market share in the total battery market. But in this smaller category of this premium segment, as I said, there has not been much change. Uh, gross margin, you know, the product, the margin profile is gradually improving day by day. Uh, the margin profile will, will get better in the second quarter because, you know, the impact of uh, the raw material inflation, receding, and the foreign exchange becoming uh, stable uh, will be more visible from second quarter onwards. The first quarter, we were consuming a lot of stuff from the earlier period, which were held at higher costs. Uh, this cross margin, you know, I think, you know, we would be steadily heading, depending on, of course, some of the macroeconomic issues. They are gradually tending towards, I would say, very, very healthy levels. And, uh, but, you know, we are committed to, re you know, keep on, advertising, communicating to our consumers. So to that extent, you know, it will see some erosion from from the higher levels of gross margin. So uh, maybe, you know, Vivek, you can highlight so on You have asked for, like, because while you know we have a one common segment as per the segment, but however, just to, we keep a track on that. So, you know, as you say, battery is our one of the key products and 85% of the profit right now from Battery, 15% odd is coming from flashlight, and lighting is almost a break even at this point of time. Okay, if, if sir, I can add just one question on the lighting front, if I may. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, sir, we've seen a very strong growth, and even in the last two, three quarters, uh, we've seen a very strong growth there. So, uh, just wanted to understand, uh, A, you know, what are the two or three things, as in, you know, what's been the sort of same store sales growth, uh, or, you know, how, uh, or basically, is this the distribution expansion which is driving, or say, a particular SQU? So, if you could just give more color on the lighting growth side, uh, that would be great, sir. So, you know, on the lighting uh, segment, we are, as we are developing a very robust portfolio, because we were short on the portfolio and we were sort of concentrating more on the bulbs. And now, you know, we are gradually going towards, you know, as I also mentioned in my uh, remarks, you know, emergency bulb, we have been among the top three or four players. So as we are expanding the portfolio, I mean, the growth is coming because it is also true with that portfolio, we are also being able to address a larger number of outlets, which was not earlier possible with a very uh, thin product uh, line. Okay. And sir, how, what would be the number of touch points that uh, you would be servicing right now? In, I'm, I'm talking more from an SMG distribution standpoint. So, uh, you know, I would say that if we look at the general trade, but we would be touching, you know, because the general trade, when I say, it means also population, smaller population towns, where we are also, through the general trade, touching upon small electrical outlets. That touch point would be would exceed fifty thousand dot. In the larger population towns where which are bigger electrical outlets, our touch point would currently be around twenty five thousand. Great. So thank you so much and uh, wish you all the best for the future. Thank you, Drew. Thank you. Our next question is on the line of Anirudh Agarwal from Value Quest Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, few questions from my side. Uh, first, on the gross margin front, so obviously zinc prices have come off materially over the last few quarters and uh, basically you alluded to some gross margin benefit, you know, that we'll get. So could you quantify broadly what gross margin benefit we are expecting? And Secondly, related to that on the margins would basically be that we had indicated earlier that we'll spend about 10% of sales on uh, ANP, if I remember correctly. And Q1 is obviously lower than that. So, would it be fair to assume that everything that you get from gross margin will go into ANP spends uh, as we go ahead? Uh, Final question was, just in terms of aggregate margins, obviously we have delivered better than the double-digit aspiration that we had set at the end of last quarter. So do you still maintain that or uh, can we look to up our margin guidance uh, for, for this year? As I said, uh, gross margin had a favorable impact during the quarter, but that favorable impact is uh, expected to increase further as we go down the road, as we in this quarter, consume materials from the earlier period where we were holding inventories at a higher cost. Yet, during this quarter, we had a gross margin improvement of about 3%, which should, I mean, if things go the way we are estimating, should improve further. Uh, uh, we, as we said that uh, the, the double digit in my uh, remarks, we had said that we at this point of time, feel that we should be able to deliver a double-digit EBITDA uh, for the whole year. Uh, with regard to ANP being 10%, as we had guided earlier, this quarter was about 7.5. A uh, lot of our spend would go in the second and third quarters. So I think for the moment, we are still not changing that guidance. And uh, let us see how it goes. Understood, sir. Uh, so, one more question on the flashlight side. So, flashlight growth was slightly tepid in this quarter. Anything to read into that? Sorry, could you come again? Uh, flashlight growth was slightly lower uh, at 5% for yeah. this quarter, right? So, anything to read into that? Yeah, no, really nothing much. I think, you know, these are our 
during this quarter and the previous one, we have been taking steps to crack into this uh, segment, you know, because as we had uh, advised earlier, we had left the rechargeable category somewhat uh, vacant. So as we are going in, maybe, you know, we had uh, slightly overestimated the rate of progress. So there is really nothing much. Uh, we are on course to get on to a double-digit growth for our flashlight. Yes, the delayed onset of monsoon somewhat uh, derailed our plan in this quarter. We expect to come back from second quarter. Uh, finally, sir, last question on the lighting side. So lighting growth has obviously been uh, great in this quarter uh, despite whatever has been happening on the market front. But just at an industry level, do you see price deflation now easing out or that trend has continued even in this quarter? And in light of that, then how, how are you looking at the overall growth target in lighting for this year? So, you know, I think any earnings call on the lighting uh, subject, this question is quite sort of, you know, I think uh, it's a given. Every quarter we see degrowth taking place in the value, uh, in the in, in prices. This is led by innovation. You know, people have been able to work very smartly and which has then rightly passed on to the market. The industry has sort of sort of used to that. So I really do not think that there is any time when we say that, okay, this process has come to an end. The process for improvement of costs will continue and consumers will continue to get benefit out of that, yet the companies will continue to thrive, you know, because ultimately there is an underlying growth in the business and uh, so, you know, I don't think there is any reason to be pessimistic about it. Got it, sir. Thanks a lot and uh, all the best. Thank you, Mr. Agarwal. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mithun Aswad from Kiva Advisors. Please go ahead. I just wanted to, uh, do you have a breakup of the sales between the three segments? That was uh, question one. Uh, also, as the um, LED and lighting business grows, is there a certain revenue level where, you know, that segment will get profitable. And uh, since this is a very competitive market on the lighting side, um, any specific adjacencies that you're looking at in the electricals or lighting space, which is more profitable? I just wanted to understand whether, from what perspective are you looking at lighting um, uh, and you've chosen this as a category? Because earlier, I remember you were in consumer durables and you exited that because of lack of profitability. Uh, uh, so you've chosen lighting now. So just wanted your thoughts on that. So I'll uh, question, uh, take the last part first and then I'll request Vivek to respond to the revenue part. So, uh, you know, lighting has been adopted by the company as our third vertical on which all our, I mean, much of our growth aspirations lie. We feel that this is a good business to be in. The market is very large. Our brand and distribution are extremely amenable to this particular uh, 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 business. So. You know, we look at lighting to sort of be a cornerstone of our growth journey. And as far as the adjacencies are concerned, this is a, we have not, you know, we have sufficient work to do in the core lighting itself. And maybe down the road we may consider, you know, some other. We have some small accessories going to today also, like spike busters and multi-point plugs and stuff like that. But that is very small, that is just to fill the range. Uh, to get into, you know, a serious uh, way into adjacencies, we will think about it down the road. Uh, we have not yet come to that stage. So with respect to the revenue numbers, you know, out on the overall revenue number, our battery holds on a 62% revenue, 16% on the flashlight, and around 22% goes on the lighting business. 
Right, sir. So, um, the question on the profitability of the lighting also, uh, I asked, well, now what sort of level of revenues would you need to reach to become profitable? So at that point, just to just mention that, you know, in this quarter we are break even, okay? So approximate 350 to 400 crore is a level where you really become a break even because it's a very competitive industry and as it is discussed that the revenues are constantly getting down. So to benchmark against the revenue is very difficult, but at this point of given time, 350 to 400 crore looks like a start point for the break-even for the lighting business. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take our next question, a reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Vikash Srivastava from RBC. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you. Uh, when do you expect your uh, AMP expenses to reach a stable state? You know, I'm just trying to differentiate between AMP as a revenue expenditure and AMP as a capital expenditure. I am presuming right now you are, since it's a transformational time, you are you are making an investment through your AMP. So while, uh, you know, AMP may keep going up as a percentage, just wanted to know when do you think we'll, we'll, we'll be reaching some kind of a stable stage and how, how many years down the line or quarters down the line are you expecting that to happen? That's a very good observation, Mr. Shivasava. So, you know, this year is a kind of an investment year for us. So we have budgeted a 10% uh, kind of, you know, spend uh, this year, which I, you know, it is not something that we need to sustain at. So I would say a normalized level of ANP for this company, you know, with uh, taking, factoring in all the growth aspirations, I think 8%, 7 to 8% would be a very reasonable number. And that I think uh, should be able to, we should be able to achieve that from next year onwards. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sakit Kapoor from Kapoor & Co. Please go ahead. Mr. Sakit, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. With your yeah, yeah. Namaskar, Mr. Sir. Sorry, sir, I was on mute. Uh, sir, firstly, if if you could explain uh, when you speak about this route to market uh, uh, strategy, how how different are we doing business currently than what we used to do traditionally? I mean, when we were using this technology route to market, what has significantly changed, and that is going to benefit going ahead. So, if you could just give a brief. Uh, uh, understanding of the So, uh, Mr. Kapoor, it is like this. As I mentioned in the opening remarks, our outlet reach of about 4 million outlets remain constant. We were reaching 4 million outlets. Even after RTM, the new route to market, we continue to reach 4 million outlets. What we have done is we have made the process of reaching those 4 million outlets more efficient. We were reaching them through a very large number of distributors. We have cut that down and consolidated. So the cost of servicing has come down and it has made more been made more efficient because, you know, we can reach quicker. We don't have to, you know, uh, take time to reach far-flung areas. And it doesn't mean that, you know, we have got those 5,000 guys down to 1,000 and 4,000 people are out of our system. Those 4,000 people have become substockists to bigger distributors. So we have retained the network, which is why you know our outlet reach remains the same. Only it has been made more uh, efficient. So the you know the sales people, the feet on the street, has more time to do quality selling. Right. And and in your in your annual report also in earlier conversation, also you spoke about Bain Capital role in bringing in more efficiencies into the system and, and providing us, uh, guiding us in the growth strategy. So uh, have they, uh, have that process is now being implemented and uh, what kind of cost has the company borne uh, for this process over a period of time, sir? So if you see over a period of time, till if you see till June, we have incurred almost more than 
26 crore rupees, around 25, 26 crore rupees has been incurred on the bain. And they are in the verge of completion. Uh, we expect within this quarter their work will be completed. And because as Subhama has mentioned, this quarter is a quarter of stability of the entire RTM. And it would be appropriate for us to see that, you know, how they are wrapping up everything. So we see that by this quarter end, something there could be an end of their journey. Sir, you mentioned 25 crore for, for the period ending June. So what is the starting point, sir, when for how? It is, Jan, it is started January, it started January 23, 22. Okay. 22. January 22 started, so there are almost 18 months with us. So for 18 months, we have uh, spent around 25 crore. Yeah. Okay, sir. Sir, when we look at your interest finance part, uh, uh, also. Sir, Mr. Sakhir, may we request you to use your handset, please? You are not audible, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can I continue? Yes, yeah, please continue, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So for the finance cost part, sir, this quarter, sequentially we have seen uh, the finance cost reducing from 21 to 9 crore. So what should be the consistent rate and uh, what is the impact of Forex for uh, forex on the numbers for this quarter, sir? So this rate does not have any impact of the Forex actually. It is a pure play working capital term loan interest. And you could see the number ranging between 8 to 9 crore, uh, depending on the how our borrowing situation goes on quarter by quarter. And uh, last year, you know, we had a one-time uh, charges of the processing cost and structuring cost. That is why if you see last year the cost of this looks 21 crore. Otherwise, if you see our quarterly costs are around uh, hovering between 9 to 10 CR. Right. And what is the net debt number, sir? The long-term... In June end, we have a net debt of around 340 crore. 340. And the breakup of the same, sir, between long-term and short-term and the cost of funds? Just give me a moment. It should be. And said uh, for the other expenses part also, uh, if, if you could give, there is any one-off item for the, uh, the other expenses line item, or this is going to be a linear uh, set of 60, 70 crore to, uh, that will be spent on a quarterly basis? So other expenses remain same as it end actually. So these are, you know, several heads are being clubbed there. And... Uh, so if you see our long-term uh, loan stands around uh, 240 crore out of this 340 crore and rest is in current one. And cost of fund, sir? Uh, we did average cost, cost of fund is around 850 uh, 8.5%. 8.5%. And this year current maturity? So it is over a period of, uh, long-term loans are over a period of four years now and we are regularly honoring those payments. Right, sir. And Mr. Saab, you spoke about rationalization of employee benefit expenses or employee costs also going ahead. So, post Q1 money, this quarter also it is around hovering around 10% of our revenue. So, uh, what should we exit this year in terms of uh, as a percentage of uh, revenue, the employee cost line item? It will be around 10%, you know, and I think from the next year onwards, as we maintain our growth momentum, that percentage would start to uh, It should go down from 10 to, sir, what, what level should we take if anything in going there? It would depend on, you know, how we grow, but, you know, right. it is considerable that we will come down, you know, somewhere between 9 and 10, certainly below 10. Okay, so 9 and 10, so okay, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, you were telling something, yeah. Please. I interrupted you, sir. You were explaining something. No, no, so that's why exactly so what I said that the next year we are looking for 10 to 9 percent, what is hovering depending on the how the business situation goes on. So that we were telling. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants you may press star N1 to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Mithun Aswad from Kiva Advisors. Please go ahead. So, um, we've been talking about there's some litigation uh, on the company, and uh, due to that, you know, the uh, current promoters are not able to raise equity, or the company is not allowed to. 
Is there any uh, update on that? Do you expect some sort of a timeline where this can get uh, uh, sorted out? Sir? So, uh, the, that particular case that you are referring to is uh, currently undergoing an arbitration process, and the arbitral count uh, that uh, the arbitrators have uh, fixed a date of early 2024 for uh, you know uh, disposing of the case. So we are currently going by that timeline. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Rajesh Jain, who is an investor. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, my question relates to the ICD that was given by SY promoters to related <coughs> parties. And, uh, and I believe that those were written off uh, in the last 18 months. Now, my question is, are we pursuing legally to recover those uh, principal amounts and interest accrued, and uh, where are we on that? So, uh, you know, uh, as you have rightly observed, the company has uh, uh, started litigation to recover those dues, and uh, they are in various stages of, you know, uh, sort of uh, in the court process. So it is, uh, I mean, I cannot give a definitive answer as to where we stand because, you know, hearings are yet to come in. Okay. So, uh, but uh, as far as I know, uh, this is uh, just uh, a matter of time and uh, it mostly relates to those entities having the financial uh, strength to repay our debt. Uh, can, you, can you just, uh, uh, can you once again give the question? Yeah. My, my understanding is that uh, uh, when we demanded the money back, it was more a question of those particular entities having sufficient funds to repay and that is why all this uh, started. So is it that uh, those companies are financially viable or they are bankrupt and that is what is causing us problems in recovering our money? Uh, I am unable to make any comment on that because we are not aware if they are bankrupt or otherwise. We have uh, filed cases against all the parties who owe money to the company. And we are following it up uh, vigorously. Absolutely. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Gunit Singh from CCIPL. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. So, uh, what is the outlook for XY22 in terms of top line and bottom line looking under current market conditions? So, it's too long time to give a full overall look, uh, outlook for the full year. However, as you said that we are companies in the growth momentum. And so, we anticipate that at least a quarter one growth to continue and uh, stabilize because as you said, we have taken a route to market in the last quarter. So, first quarter you have seen that we have posted a high single digit uh, number and we expect to continue the same with respect to the top line. So high similarly growth and uh, improving margins, correct? Yeah, of course. So in margin at respect, we said we are looking for the double digit EBITDA. All right. And uh, I mean, this year is a year for investments. So for yeah. FY25, I mean, we should expect even better margins than for what we're seeing right now. And, uh, I mean, what, what, what are your long-term growth projections like for the coming two to five years? Once, I mean, we stabilize the investments. So, so at this point, you know, everybody would like to have a good growth. We have also done the transformation initiative. So we definitely look forward a double-digit growth for the next year. 
but uh, as you know that you know we are uh, along with the battery we are also entering into a lighting rechargeable category sorry uh, flashlight rechargeable and lighting big way but you know in the lighting business as you say that you know one of the previous people have spoken the way the value deflation is happening because you know the with the cost, continuous improvement in the product cost and all so while if you ask our internal aspiration should be a double digit growth however we have to very closely monitor how the industry goes together all right and so how are the raw material prices shaping up i mean for our, the majority raw materials that is how are they shaping up and i mean do we expect uh, do we see them getting bottom out right now or are they at a good trajectory I mean, what do you expect so if you see for our battery vertical where if we talk about real of course the raw material prices are stopping but it is very difficult to maintain that where they go up because you know commodity is a very volatile cycle so sometime you know it could be two x of the price sometime it may come down but as of now we can see the way trend is going on it looks like the prices should be stable but we are we are keeping finger crossed that it should be stable at this point of time but whether it is bottom or up or not that we are keeping watch on all right that's all much come sir thank you and all the best thank you puni <coughs> thank you thank you our next question is from the line of sunil jain from nirmal bank securities private limited please go ahead yeah thank you for taking my question uh, sir can you share uh, volume growth for banking segment so if you see in a battery our volume remain almost flat to little marginal negative because this industry mostly this a value premiumization is coming on at this point of time was there any price increase or uh, premium product uh, product mix there some product mix and we took some price increases in a couple of skews not across board okay okay and uh, do you see any volume growth uh, in this uh, battery segment over a, in a year or uh, it's likely to remain more of a flat is so it's it's flat to anticipate some slow growth a single digit maybe a very single digit small growth there but not very optimistic on a very high level of growth on a volume at this point of time okay since uh, the growth in revenue is almost around 6% uh, there is seems to be a good uh, price increase or product mix change uh, which is happen so is this likely to sustain yeah we believe that this can be sustained you know the market uh, tertiary data is uh, sort of looking up you know the data that needs and tracks which comes into secondaries and primary sale of the company you know with a lag so let us see i mean we are keeping watching but you know this uh, growth that we saw in the first quarter should be sustainable great sir and so second about uh, this uh, flashlight uh, so comparatively our growth was a bit slow in this quarter and uh, we were looking at uh, good growth uh, expected in this flashlight segment uh, now you are guiding somewhere at around uh, double digit growth so are we doing something uh, or is there competitive uh, landscape is but uh, changing or something like that no i think the the market uh, remains buoyant you know the market is fully you know it is basically one branded player which is us and risk is by and large disorganized and informal it is you know we have been a late entrant to the market and that is why it is taking us a bit of a time we are uh, bringing the full portfolio which uh, you know would be able to address all price segments and all quality segments in the market the feature segments in the market so the delayed somewhat delayed onset of monsoon did uh, you know slow down our growth uh, during this quarter we hope that this will uh, sort of even out over the balance of the period and we are still holding on to a double digit uh, kind of growth in the flashlight segment okay great sir all the best thank you very much Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question of our question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Okay.
Okay, we thank all participants. Very kind of you to have uh, taken interest in us. And this is our, uh, you know, every quarter's feature that we come and address questions of, of uh, you know, analysts and the, you know, uh, market experts. So we will continue to do so. And uh, I think we have already talked of our journey. We have talked of our aspirations. And so we will rest ourselves with that. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. On behalf of Everady Industries India Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you.